like YouTube's up and running. It always takes a minute. Okay, good. All right, let's get into it. Oh, of a curved cube. You can. Okay, yeah, I see how you can do this. Oh, Aqualander got it. <laughs> oh, I'm. I was like, work done by spring. What work do you have to do by springtime? But no, they mean like. That's spring. That does, like, work in the physics sense. <laughs> um, that already has an answer, though, anyway. Really? That's gonna... I have no idea what language that is. But it's interesting that they provide an English translation actually in the worksheet. I assume it's not the person adding that in. But it, it, it has an answer though, so so we'll keep on moving. Mm. My answer is still correct. I even substituted. I don't know how you pronounce that. Hyperbolic secant. But let's see if we can figure out the answer. Um, transform rotates 270 degrees. Hey, differential form. Yeah, so... Um, wow, that's kind of mean that they have to do this. Depends on what class they're in. I, I, I'm not super good with these uh, hyperbolic trig functions, but I do know the basics. I hopefully know enough to uh, tell this person if they're right or wrong. So their question is, is my answer still correct? Even I substituted hyperbolic secant instead of hyperbolic tangent. So the question is more or less, is this thing with hyperbolic tangents equal to this thing with hyperbolic secants. Which, I feel like there should be some kind of denominator for one of these if they're going to be equal, right? Um, oh, there might be some kind of um, identity here, though. Oh yeah, this can be really tricky to tell. Um... What we can do is we can cheat and use Wolfram Alpha and strategically plug in a certain step. It's so like after they apply their sub here, we can see if Wolfram Alpha gets the same answer as this person. Can we also get, actually, maybe let's start with giving it the initial one here. Why do they give the integral in terms of y? It's not really important, but it's kind of weird. Because I, I, I'm not. I don't think I'm, I'm good enough with these hyperbolic trig functions to try and do some... Well, we can actually at least look at all those identities. Hyperbolic trig function identities. Because if there's some kind of like... Um, 
summer product for inside yeah like this is where the constant of integration can get tricky uh is there actually what, what's the angles involved here we have a 2y and a 2y we have a 2y and a 2y okay So it should be, I guess, one eighth goes with the power of four. One eighth goes to the power of four. One twelfth goes to the power of six. One twelfth goes to the power of six in a negative sign. Okay, so it's the exact same thing, but one is hyperbolic secant, the other is hyperbolic tangent. That's kind of interesting. Um, so like a, a double angle here isn't going to apply. It's possible one of these applies. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, I never knew these identities. Osh of ix is equal to cosine of x? That makes sense. I never knew that was true, though. Oh, that's kind of funny. Okay, so my bet is that if they are equivalent, it's going to be some kind of application of these addition identities that is going to be tricky to spot. Uh, just by looking at the two end results. So yeah, I, I'd still would rather do um, like take their step right after the sub. Um, well, actually, so they 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 take actually. Uh, I mean, let's follow their work along a bit more as well. So the integral is cinch cube two y. Actually, no, no, no. Let's plug in the initial one first. I, I'm all over the the, the place. Cinch two y cubed over cosh 2y squared cosh 2y ah question mark squared so let's see oh no x's and y's that's a very easy integral to do right there this is a slightly harder one what Did I type it in right? Cinch cubed cosh squared. Why aren't there? Oh, because it did some kind of half angle thing. Give it to me in a different form. That is a different form, I guess. They gave me exactly what I asked for. Um, what is cosh 4x? Say it's try to replace 2y with just y. Oh, yeah. It's a nice call, Jeff. Just so Wolfram Alpha doesn't try to do... Uh, the identities. Maybe we do want those because that, that that might be a little bit too different there. It's a nice try, but I I uh, maybe you don't want the the, the two the twos there because they, they do change the power. I supposedly. Um. Now it's giving it in a different form. It's the exact same problem, but it, it, I think Wolverine is giving me a completely different form than the first time. Um, why do we get this is just a power of one of hyperbolic secant here? Still with the double angle though. Essentially, du over u, where u equals cosh cubed. No. Is it? It's cinch cubed over cosh uh, squared. Oh, okay. See, I know the, the powers aren't uh, matching. 
Oh wait, but yeah, you, you wouldn't want them to match necessarily, but no, we'd, I don't think it's a simple U sub. It, it is a U sub, just not a simple one, I guess. Um, alright, so I mean, let's just take like their step right here after they apply their secant sub and see what will come up with spit, spits out, I guess. Because I, I don't know what, what to make of this at, at all, to be honest. <laughs> So they have minus a half integral. Uh, that step v to the fourth v squared minus one over v. v to the fourth v squared minus one over v. Actually, that's not that bad to. Uh, it's going to give me something like. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, I was just realizing that's not actually that hard to integrate at all. <laughs> um, this first one really shows every step, though, which I'm not criticizing them for. You write it all out. Honestly, Jeff, that's not a bad call. Uh, I, I think that's that that's that's probably the the the, the best thing to to do here. Uh, let let let's see. Tangent. And by write it all out in e to the x, I mean make Wolfram Alpha write it all in, in e to the x. So I hope Wolfram Alpha write it all out in e to the x. Tangent to the fourth two y over eight. Minus uh, hyperbolic tangent to the six for twelve. All right, please give me exponential form. They might differ by a constant, which is actually well, that's what we expect. I think for them to differ by a constant. Come on, exponential form. You're not going to give me exponential form. Really, Wolfram? We could plug in the definition of the exponential form. I, I think we're 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 gonna do that. Um, do they give me exponential form? Only for cinch and kosh. Ugh. I need to be told what hyperbolic tangent is. I don't want to do simple division. There we go. So we have two x. So we'll just have uh, twos everywhere. That. Uh, what's it called? Something words. Everywhere there's an x, we put a two x. So for hyperbolic tangent, e to the uh, two i or. 2ix, I guess. E to the 2ix minus e to the minus ix minus trig to... Oh! That'd be much simpler. That's the Mathematica version. Let's see. Trig to exp brackets. What? Oh no. <laughs> Do natural language. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I guess that's what we get. Let's see how how much how different the, the other one looks. Could we I mean we could just subtract.
Well, okay, we'll, we'll type in the other thing separately over here, and then we'll subtract the, the two and see what we'll probably say about that. So, 3 secant to the 4th 2y. 3 times secant 2x to the 4th. Yo, Mary, how, how's it going? So, struggling with some hyperbolic trig right now. Uh, over 24. That's what you do all day? Uh, basically, yeah. I mean, I, I read a question from someone in chat, I guess, but um, this person asking if uh, the way they did an integral is correct, and we're trying to uh, figure it out for them. This is his real face. <laughs> yeah, so there's like hyperbolic trig involved, which I'm definitely not good with, but I can figure it out. Especially with uh, Jeff making some good calls here for stuff to uh, to try. To the 6 over 24. I know those denominators aren't simplified, but... That's fine. Just make a make a match. Okay. So we got that typed in. Okay, the, the fractions are bothering me. Henrik, you got that first. She Spetcher was talking so much smack about how he was gonna get first. And look who got it. Okay. No way these are the same, right? Oh no, it's not doing it the exact same way. It was down bad for the Mary. <laughs> okay, what happens if we subtract these? The Thirst Trap Avatar? I don't... Is Wolfram Alpha lazy, or are these just not the same? I feel, I feel like this person made a mistake somewhere. Full to simplify in front of it? Okay, okay. Let's see if Wolfram Alpha yells at me for running out of computation time or something. Okay, so yeah, we're getting functions here in the difference, which makes me think these aren't the same, and this person made a mistake somewhere in their work. It's not a bad thing to have an answer in a different form for an, an integral, but I guess maybe we can try to spot their mistake somewhere. Actually, we could also, uh, just as an experiment, let's, make, let's take off the trig to EXPs and just see what Wolfram Alpha does with those. Cloud dot Wolfram? It's free, limited use. Really? Uh, how's it different? Yeah, Henrik, it's this crazy integral with hyperbolic trig functions. It's pure Mathematica. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't know the, the language, I guess. It doesn't seem like, I guess, that hard, though. Or work from languages they like to call it. Oh, okay. They have to, like, take credit. Um, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so this starts off with doing u equals 2y. Just get rid of these angles, which... I mean, you might want the eh, you probably don't want the angles. Because you already have powers involved, and you probably don't want more powers involved. So, okay. That's fair enough. Um, 
I, I mean, there might be some trick doing a double angle, but I don't think there's anything wrong with this. It seems more pure because you don't have to manipulate Wolfram to do what you want. Uh, that's fair. I, I do sometimes get frustrated at how Wolfram interprets the things that, that I'm typing. <laughs> um, what kind of class makes you integrate such crazy integrals? I don't know. This person didn't... They didn't say what class... A levels... I hope they're not grade 11 to 12. I guess like the A levels making you do some... Uh, weird it integrals, I guess, but... I, I, yeah, it's, uh, I never had to do an, an, an integral like this when I was learning calculus. Actually, I never had to do an integral like this, pe period. <laughs> I, we, we, we almost never touched hyperbolic trig functions when I was doing my degree. Thanks for lurking, Jeff. Um, yeah, so I started with this use of just 2 wide, getting rid of the angles, which probably nothing wrong with. And then they split things up to get hyperbolic tangents. Why is that to the fourth? What? They have three cinches on top, which matches the three on top. Is that... Is that not a two? Is that a six? Or a seven? That might be a 7, because there's 7 powers of Kosh here. That might be why Wolfram is giving us, like, different things. Oh, it's it's 7! I, I was working on the wrong problem, dude! Oh my god. There's 7 will, will, will look like a 2. Um... <laughs> you never used Kosh or a cinch before? Yeah, I... I... I think they get used in some engineering contexts, but... I, I, uh, I can't say that I'm familiar w with them. Okay, so we, we have made a bit of a breakthrough, which is, that's a 7, not a 2. They may have been using plane waves. Um, okay, that explains that issue with the hyperbolic seek and not having a power from before. <laughs> yeah, the only, the only application I can remember offhand is that, um, a chain hanging from two fence posts, so it makes that, like, dip. Uh, that follows a Kosh curve. That's the only application of <laughs> hyperbolic trig functions that I can remember. <laughs> Catenary? Curve is suspended. That's Kosh, yeah. Yeah, so that's like the only application that I that I actually know. Um, okay, so this does seem to more or less kind of match uh, what the person... Oh wait, this is actually in terms of secant. Uh, we can just rewrite this. <laughs> uh, Wolfram just loves having Kosh of, of 4x, doesn't it? We could manually rewrite this, but what if I'm feeling lazy and I want Wolfram to do it? Okay, thanks a lot, Wolfram. Um, let's start. Okay, let's let's take this form and then we'll apply the uh, half angle to that thing. Okay, so the half angle for Kosh, double angle. I, I don't remember the difference between half angle and, and double angle, and don't tell me that's four. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's not a difference, though, but um, I think we want to apply Kosh 2x, so Kosh 4x is equal to 2 Kosh squared 2x minus 1. Okay. Which one was I working in? Here. So this Kosh 4x is also... I already forgot what I said. Um, <laughs> 2 Kosh squared 2x... 2 cosh 2x squared. So minus 1? Minus 1. Okay. Um, and then now this hyperbolic secant. Why is that 2 to the 2x? What? 
shouldn't be of 2x. I, I, I hope. Mapla's a little bit drunk. Okay, and so we multiply this hyperbolic uh, secant in. Wait, yeah, like just into these two, I guess. So, oh my god, let me, I, I, I don't want to lose this work. This, I could probably just do this on the whiteboard too. But, uh, for quitters. Okay, so let's buy that hyperbolic secant with that kosh. You're gonna get two hyperbolic secant to the fourth. And there's a one over sixteen in front, so you get one over eight. What? That's what you think I wanted to do, Wolfram? Oh my god. One over eight. What? What? What are you doing to me, Wolfram? Okay. Uh, I roll it to the fourth two x. Okay, so that's for multiplying that and that. Now we have to multiply this and this and stick a 1 over 16 in front of it. Right? Yeah. So it's going to be minus a negative 1, so it's going to be plus 1 over 16. 2x to the 6. Okay. Now we combine that in that, 1 over 48 plus 1 over 16, that's 4 over 48, no, 3 over 48, <laughs> um, 3 over 48. And 3 over 48 simplifies to... Didn't I just say that was... No, it should, no it's, it's 4 over 48. That's why I was getting confused. Uh, 4 over 48 simplifies to 1 over 12. Okay. And I think that matches. Because you get... 1 over 8 sticking to the 4th. Which tab is in? There we go. Oh, this one has the, the negative sign, though. We, we get the same thing, but the signs are flipped. Why is that? Mm. Trying to make sure that I didn't make a stupid mistake here, which is definitely possible, but I don't think I did. So let me let's see if we can spot where they flipped the sign in their work. Like, uh, do they have that derivative break? I don't really know my hyperbolic trig derivatives. Um, I don't think that site had them. This site might have them. No, it doesn't. Of course, Paul's a, a, a section on this. Paul's a section on everything. So it is minus hyperbolic secant hyperbolic tangent. Okay. I think the music is a little bit quiet. It's also just a quiet part of the song, but I turned it up just a little bit. Actually, it's just, it's just the headphones, I think. Do squared. <laughs> His girdle. Actually, okay, no. Not, I, I, it was just my own headphones that the music was quiet in. There we go. Okay. So they turn hyperbolic tangent into hyperbolic secant minus one.
which is true. Oh, this does give the derivatives. Oh, but not for or else seeking for some reason. Um okay. So far so good up to this step, I as far as I can tell. Theory that is hyperbolic secant squared squared. Then they do v equals hyperbolic secant u. Um divide over the hyperbolic secant. That hyperbolic tangent goes away. You lose a power. Oh. I see how they okay, that's fine. So they do get the negative sign out front there. And it never goes away. Huh. I don't... Ugh. I don't know, man. I feel like they... That's why I did it right, but... Hmm. Because it also, like, the sign matches this one. Oh, no, I didn't mean to delete that. Uh, Control-Shift-T. Okay, good. This is weird, though. I don't know. I, I, I feel like they're right, but I'm like, I, I, I'm thinking that I just want to like move on. So like, I, I, I think they're right, but like Wolfram Alpha just isn't agreeing, and I don't know if it's a Wolfram thing. Spherical rectangles and spherical squares. Uh, I haven't heard of those before. I, I, I'm just gonna... I, I, I've tried this one, but I can't get it to quite work out in Wolfram. In... Yeah. So, what, what, what is a spherical rectangle? I've never heard of that before in my life. <laughs> It's part of your question. Like Wyoming? Like a rectangle that exists on a sphere. Okay. Oh, okay. It's the same idea where um, in spherical geometry, a the angles in a triangle add to slightly more than 180 degrees. See, I know very little about non-Euclidean geometry. But... It's like if you literally just like drew a rectangle onto a sphere... Oh wait, but what if you rotate it? What do you mean, what if you rotate it? Okay, yeah, like that exactly. It'd be a spherical rectangle, I guess.
Right. Well, if you're willing to redefine your latitude and longitude, sure. Because I think, I would imagine for a sphere, it's all just a matter of perspective. No, if you want to force your same coordinate system, though, I don't really know how you would express that. <laughs> You'd have to look into, I guess, expressing lines in spherical geometry. Or in spherical coordinates. Uh, that's probably too advanced for me. Do the four corners of a spherical rectangle form a rectangle in 3D? The four corners of a spherical rectangle form a rectangle in 3D. Like a rectangular prism in 3D? Oh, never mind. You mean it exists in 3D, but it's still a two-dimensional thing. If you project it back down to... If you convert it back to Cartesian coordinates... Um... My instinct is to say, no, they are different. And it's just very difficult to express a spherical rectangle in rectangular coordinates, I think. So you want to deal with them? This random Quora uh, answer seems to agree with me. Which, I mean, I don't trust Quora that much, but, you know, it's at least... It agrees with my bias, so... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I don't think it'll it'll be that simple of a problem. Or yeah, if you could like just like somehow project it back down to a, a regular, like um, Euclidean rectangle, though, you wouldn't really be working in spherical ge uh, geometry, I think. Yeah, that, that's that's my best guess for for you. What's the largest spherical thing you fit inside the USA? Oh, interesting. I mean, could you not take the, uh, you know, take like the farthest north latitude until you hit whatever like Great Lake or something, and then take the farthest south latitude until you, I guess, hit the Gulf of Mexico, maybe the Mexican border. I don't know which one is far, farther north, and then like just like do it like like that. I guess you need some pretty. I think it depends how exact you you, you want to be.
Mark Twain. Actually, wait. Well, it's the person asking about before. So stressed about this new unit. I know how to graph them from the equation. I can't wrap my head around these word problems. If you refuse to help me, I don't worry about our queen tests on these. Say number two, just being stressed out. All right, all right. So let's, let's, let's see if we can. Uh, this this thing. Well, this one we should be able to to do. Uh, do Dumo Ed. Uh, hey, welcome in. How, how do I post? You can either type it out right there in chat, or if you have like a picture or something, you can uh, put it in my Discord. Some sort of containing the USA, but having to inscribe makes it harder. I mean, I don't see why it's harder, I guess, if you're able to... Um, I, fe I feel like it'd be a similar, like, process. I, I mean, these questions are always kind of stupid. Um, I don't feel like you'd really... Oh my god, Alkalaner. Got it. Alright. Fine. We're, we're moving on. Um, and yeah, Tumoed or do, 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 do mode or however, um, just once you do post in the Discord, just like, uh, let me know in chat, so like, uh, note it to, uh, to, to check it. Well, I thought there would be like a universal farthest north and farthest south that you can be. Like, I guess I don't understand why it would depend on the east-west. But... I guess maybe because of the shape of the coast? I don't know. Sure. Maps of India.com, but we're looking at the map of USA. Okay. Well, I say, you know, they they they, they get everyone, I guess. Furthest north of West works fine for circumscribed. When you inscribe, so like they plan to take over the world. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> they have a giant like future India stamp on this. So like I think like okay like if you take like that corner of California there and just draw across what's wrong with that but I guess that means you you're not limiting the possibility of some like rectangle that starts there with the corner and is wider even though it's shorter okay so I I guess I, I see why that's harder than Jeff uh you're good Frederick uh, let me see what the question is. So the east-west lines are curved. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, ABCD is a kite with diagonals A, C, and B, D drawn on a centimeter square grid with a scale of one centimeter for one unit on each axis. Secondary school question? Okay. A is the points of the coordinates negative three, four. Like ninth grade? Okay, that's helpful to, to know. Diagonals of, chi of the kite intersect at point M with coordinate zero, two. Given that A, B equals A, D. Oh, I'm going to have to draw this one.
Hmm. Do you good one hour to solve? Oh, so are you stuck on a certain part or uh Are you trying to like see how I solve it, I guess? Hopefully I can do it less than an hour. I, th I think I can. I just have to understand what's happening here. You solved it? Okay, so I guess, uh... You just want to see me solve it? Alright. It's fair enough. Negative three, four. Uh, how far are we going to go? It seems like it's going to be the top? Yeah. Try to draw things even as space as we can. So A is negative three, positive four. What other information are we given here? Um, diagonals of the kite intersect at the point M with coordinates zero, two. Given that AB equals AD equals 6.5 and the coordinate of the X coordinate and the X coordinate of B is positive, find the coordinates of B and D. Okay, so if the diagonals intersect at M, that means the kite is gonna go like all the way across here somewhere. So I'm going to draw this like very like roughly just so we have something for the sake of argument here. So C is the one that's across because we're giving one, one of that diagonals is AC. So C and A have to connect on a diagonal. And they say that uh, B has a positive X coordinate. So B must go here and D must go there. Okay. Uh, AB equals AD equals 6.5. 6 6.5. 6.5. I'm going to look coordinates of points B and D. Really? Don't we need more information? Am I missing something about what it means to be a kite? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we do have enough information. I just need to remember facts about a kite in the diagonal. I need to uh, consult with my... Uh, Old friend Google. Perpendicular lines and midpoints. Oh yeah, you, you can make some right triangles here, can't you? So you can make a right triangle like there and there. The short diagonal has equal lengths. Good to know. I 
I bet the longer diagonals divide in some kind of like ratio. No, I, I, I'm sure I can do this. I just need to... Uh... Look at the, the properties of the kite again, like I'm doing right now. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to figure out the coordinates. Uh, I've never been that, uh, very good at that aspect of geometry problems like these, but we can definitely get the... Uh... Length of the short diagonal here, and that'll be a huge... Uh... IGC... Yes, I don't know what that is. Oh! <laughs> Spetri! It's because we had daylight savings time. <laughs> That's what I was going to tell you yesterday that, that, that I forgot. For me, I started at my normal time, uh, but Germany needs to get with the program and do it on the same day, I guess. Um... <laughs> So yeah, we can take the distance between A and M. Um, so X1 squared, or X1 minus X2 squared, so negative 3 minus 0 squared plus Y1 minus Y2 squared. This is just the distance formula is root 9 plus 4. Root 13, that's an annoying number. So I'm going to get something nicer. Um, the E Marl's another day, yep. And I, I'm switching the uh, the crowd control run to um, Elden Ring, so it looked way more fun, the things that we uh, get to, to, to use there. Do you and the SFC consider dropping DST? Yeah, I, I I know about efforts in the US to to do it, but it just never actually goes through. Um, I used to live in Hawaii, and they don't do daylight savings time there. It was really nice. So you do before you do A levels. Oh, okay. So the Pythagorean theorem, we could figure out this um, BM length, which you know BM, ha, ha funny. <laughs> so six point five is like pot noose. Um, 6.5 squared equals 13 plus BM. Ah. Uh, that's work for a calculator. Oh, BM squared. My bad. Which actually, let's, yeah, let's, let's get a calculator. Wolfram. Uh, 6.5 squared minus 13. Uh, 5.4, we'll call it, I guess. Got to round it. Uh, it means the entire dB length is, um, 10.8. I don't know if we will really need that fact, but we have it. Okay, so... There's... 
there's surely now this is part where I was getting a little bit stuck when I was doing this in my head. Like when I, I'm able to get this far in the problem. And it, I, 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 I'm sure there's a way to figure out now that we've solved this right triangle, and so there must be a way to figure out that last coordinate for B and D. I don't really know the formula to be honest. There's only a way you could do it with like vectors, but I doubt you're supposed to use that. Hmm. Let me see. The wrong direction? And okay, DAB is always 90. No, I just uh, drew it where it looks like 90 d d degrees. It that It's definitely, if it's 90 degrees, it has to be a square actually. So it's, it's not going to be 90. Oh, you can use the distance formula to figure out a relationship between x and y. Oh, yeah, I... <laughs> There's no way you're supposed to do it like that. So this is, like, okay, so... do do what? This is, this is the point where I kind of, like, I don't really know the general techniques to do a problem like this, so I would do it some kind of very odd way that I doubt you're supposed to do it. Send you the working out pick. All right, thank you. Some here analysis to remember the limits of each point can be. That might be a different way of saying what I was kind of thinking, where, like, if we know the distances involved, we should be able to work something out, but uh, I just don't know. I, or, well, I'm, I'm like, 100% certain that Duma isn't supposed to do it that way, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure that I can do it that way, but it takes me a lot of struggling. Oh, so you do use... Huh. You do use the equation, like distance formula with an equation of a line. Uh, how do you know the coordinates would be our x comma 3x plus 2? Or 3 over 2x plus 2. It's because you make the perpendicular line from A, C. So actually, that's the thing that I was thinking to do. I just thought it'd be too, too complicated. <laughs> yeah. So no, yeah, the, we're, why is my cam blurry? Uh, never had that problem before. What? <laughs> that was weird. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, yeah, this actually is the thing I was thinking to do. I just thought that wouldn't be how you're supposed to do it. I thought there'd be some kind of more convenient way. It does do it more efficiently than the way that I was thinking. Um, but yeah, you set up 
you know the equation of the line that B must be on, and you know what the length between A and B are? Say X is plus or minus 3. Okay. So yeah, um, I don't have a better way to do it than this way. Oops. Um, this is the way that I was basically thinking you should do it. I just haven't, I just am not used to these problems, so I'm uh, just arriving to that solution kind of slowly. <laughs> Separates good students from okay students. Yeah, it, it is. It, it probably serves that function per, per pretty well if that's your goal. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so, uh, sorry I couldn't solve it f f faster, but, uh, thanks for, 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 for the question. Do you do variational calculus? Um, like, calculus of variations, I don't know anything about. I, uh, know just, like, the normal calculus, like, um, that you would take as part of, like, um, an undergraduate, like, math degree, so, like, Derivatives, integrals, and um, multivariable calculus of variations. Okay, yeah, no, I I don't know anything about calculus of, of variations, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry. I'm trying to, I don't know of anyone who knows about calculus of variations either. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thanks. Hope, hope, hope you have a good day. Trying to learn calculus of variations without using reference? That sounds kind of hard. Like deriving it for yourself? Oh yeah, it's either uh, exclamation point math streamers or dollar sign chads. But um, I, I don't know of any of people in that list knowing calculus of variations. Oh, really? I didn't think of him. Uh, well, if you're still here, I'm really bad at physics, but damn, do I like it. It's a, it's a funny name, but <laughs> I'm sure we did a problem for you. Okay. Well, I mean, if you're willing to go over to Twitch, you could try um, twitch.tv slash physics and depression. He apparently has done some calculus of variations before. But I don't know uh, everything that he's good at, so I, I can't promise you the world there. But yeah, I, I don't know of anyone on YouTube who's good with it, and um, on Twitch, I, I'm still not sure either. Sounds good. He normally streams like uh he would start the stream in like a couple of hours, like the nighttime in America. Mm. Oh, I have no idea. What the heck? This is really hard to read as well. <laughs> so this is basically saying T choose R, as far as I can tell, but I don't know, this is... I'm, I'm, I'm okay. It's 
So it's answering your, your question? Okay. Oh, like calculus space probability. X equals negative infinity? That kind of makes me uncomfortable to write it like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I... What does that mean? Yeah, I have no clue what this means. I don't remember the meaning of the partial de derivative of a probability density function like means either. There's really not a ton of questions out there on Reddit. Um, people go over to the math Discord. Oops. Yo, at SPQ. Let's go try the uh, the math Discord. See what's happening. Okay. Oh my god, more geometry. Hey, uh, Rita? How's it going? Really? We can definitely do this. Geometry is too hard for me. <laughs> Geometry is the worst. I can only do this proof by induction. 3k minus 1 times k is equal to n squared m plus 1. It's like a weird variation on the um, sum of squares formula. Uh, I'm doing good. How about you, Rita? I'm saying that right. Get this geometry off my off my whiteboard. Okay, so what we want to prove is the sum k equals 1 to n through k minus 1k is equal to uh, n squared n plus 1. By induction. Okay. So, uh, let's start with the base case. For k equals 1, we have um, 3 times 1 minus 1 times 1 is equal to 
Um, I'm uh, sorry, not K equals one, N equals one. Uh, two times one is two. One squared times one plus one is equal to two. Base case done. Now we assume that uh, the original thing is true. And now we show it for n plus 1. I in French, I don't understand English very well. Um, if you have a question in French, feel free to post it, and I can use a translator. Or maybe able to figure it out. I guess. If you're here to hang out, you're welcome to as well. And uh, Arjan, I'm not gonna try, try to pronounce the last name. How do you integrate a two by two matrix? Um, I don't know how you integrate a two by two matrix. <laughs> Is it like I haven't actually done it before? But if you have something like. That wouldn't you consider it a constant, I guess? If you have like functions inside here like that, then I really don't know. But I, I've never like done anything like that before. So I, I took this original statement and I made it n plus 1 instead of n, and so let's uh, break out the n plus 1 term, keep the uh, rest of the sum intact. Oops. Now plugging in n plus 1. Let's uh, change up a little bit, and then we also we also assumed this, so we can plug this in for that. n squared n plus one. n plus one minus one is just n. So n plus one. Uh, let me. Translate that. Translate what I say thanks to Google. Um, French have a question. So, how about that? <laughs> Translated colloquially? Oh, I don't know. I hope it did. I guess we'll find out based off their reaction. <laughs> if I said something horrible or not. Um, so we could factor an n minus or n plus one out here. Like, what's the end goal for where, where we want to get? We want to show. Uh, like we, we would want to show here that this is equal to that with n plus 1. Like that. So.
So I, I think I see what we have to do here. So let's factor this n plus 1 out. Actually, it's just n squared plus 3n. And here, let's factor out. Maybe I don't see what we have to do. Are we going to get an extra n with how I did this? Let's just factor the n out and see what... Oh, wait. Like, I, I want to do this. And we have an n plus 2, and then nearly an n plus 1, but it's not really arranged right, is it? That's not really right. This last step is a little bit difficult. Don't hesitate to exercise your freedom of assembly. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you need to tell the, 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 the French that. They probably know. <laughs> I mean, you could multiply everything out, I guess. But... No, this is just wrong, because you get an N out front. I, I, I did so something wrong here, clearly. Did I copy something down wrong? I did. Oh my god. I guess I think I did. It should be, um... 3... N plus 1, minus 1, like that! There we go. Okay, that's why I wasn't get, get, getting a... So, okay, before I progress much more with this, let me look at, um... Yeah, Elrude, I realized that <laughs> at the last minute. Um... Thank you for, for catching that. The ball and sphere work. Can... Okay. General form of the simple polynomial P of X. Oh, maybe Jeff. I don't even know. Probably be an interesting problem. Okay, now this should work out though, hopefully. So yeah, uh n squared n plus one three n plus two. 10 plus 1. So let's still factor the n plus 1 out. And plus 3n plus 2. Ah, look at that. Much simpler. That factors to n plus 1 times n plus 2. 
All right. Once you actually like, you know, don't make a mistake in how you write it. It's a pretty easy part problem. <laughs> Um, sorry, I got some in Discord. Oh no. I got beaten to it. Oh, they, they didn't do the trick here. They, they, they can just factor the cables one out from that set. I don't know if you need these. Uh, I feel bad doing it, but should I just jump into this? This is a really simple solution here. Let's see this person types. Um, Arjun, yeah, you do. Um, this person didn't show it. I assume they did that separately, though. Let's see if this person, uh, okay. K squared. K plus one plus K plus two K plus one factor out the K plus one to get uh, K plus one K squared plus three K plus two it's here to work with. Uh, yeah. It's capital K. Shouldn't be capital. Okay, I feel bad butting into that conversation, but I think that's a good thing to contribute there, so. <laughs> it's uh, Help 17 Muho. I don't know if we see something pop up there. Get some water. All right, much better. 
Um, W in the subspace spanned... Uh, I think you do an augmented matrix with these are the first three and W as the result. And see if you get a solution. Can you inconsistent system? Oh. Uh, okay, I won't go through and do all the manipulations, but let's put let's put it into Wolfram Alpha and see what that does. Um I think Wolfram Alpha can you even do arbitrary matrices in Wolfram? I think we're going to have to make it 4x4 four four and just have a row of zeros in the bottom. 1, oh, negative 1. I mean, you can also maybe just show that it's um, it spans all R3, and since W is in R3, then it must be in the thing. I'm just not going to put linear algebra to know if that's like the, the best way to do it or not. I think it's either way, you're going to have to do basically the same amount of work, so it doesn't actually matter all that much. Uh, 3, 2, 1. Oh, really, SPQ? Uh, too, too late. Um... You don't reduce it? Oh. Yeah, that seems pretty inconsistent to me, too. <laughs> Get zero equals one? That can't be right. That's weird. So... Oh shoot, uh, sh uh, that's fine. How, like, well, well, from Alpha tell me if this spans, or if he's actually four, two, oh wait! Yeah, clearly this doesn't span all of our three, because two times column uh, two is column three. Okay. See, so yeah, it definitely doesn't span everything. It doesn't seem like W is in the span. Differential form? Yeah. Um, the issue is that I agree with the person saying that with the, with the answer this person got, but the book answer apparently says the opposite, so I don't know what to think of that. Let's see what this person said. Never factored anything before, that makes it a lot harder. I um, wrote, but uh, here it is. Okay, time for, 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 for LaTeX. K squared, K plus 1, plus 3K plus 2, K plus 1, equals... Uh, actually, this is not going to be hard LaTeX at all. Uh, K squared plus 3K plus 2 equals K plus 1. 
k plus 1, k plus 2, equals uh, k plus 1 squared. Ah, too, too many parentheses. k plus 1. Oh, k plus 2. k plus 2. Thank you. How k k plus one the exact same way you can factor out a two, for example, if all the terms have a two. When you get um, k squared plus three k plus two. That's a quadratic. Um, you can figure out uh, a few different ways. You were taught slash principle of. That's fine. Induction is uh, to get to Is, uh, is to show that, um, shoot, how do you do summation in LaTeX? Now I actually do have to do some slightly more difficult LaTeX. Uh, tech. Ah. Just my cheat sheet. Slash sum, slash limits. Okay. Thank you, SPQ. <laughs> Slash sum slash limits underscore. Uh, K equals one, two, and plus one of three K minus one and plus one is equal to n plus 1 squared plus 2. Uh, prove that. Oh, and thank you too, he xt. <laughs> No offense meant by this, but given proof by induction is part of the ill for the mass specification, they should be able to factor as a quadratic. Yeah, I agree, Arjun. If they're doing proofs by induction, they definitely need to be comfortable with factoring things. Um, there's no point in like a, you know, like, or you know, like it, not, not not like an insulting way, but um, they, they definitely it's something that they need to to. To like learn. Yo, Ben, the meth is going great. <laughs> How's it going for you? So, yeah, I, I kind of like. I put the fact in the quadratic part kind of like back on them a, a little bit because I, I, I don't know if they already have a way to solve these or, uh, or what. It's pretty nice surf runs last night, so that was Pog. Nice. I worked on that for a little bit. I was a little bit busy doing other things, though, so I, I wasn't able to, to watch su super closely, though. Mm. 
Maybe you do another surf stream? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I, I surfed with the, the other Ben maybe two weeks ago. But I don't know, man. It, it, it's hard to like fit stuff in. There's so many games that I'm excited to play. Uh, that's hard to get time in for for surf. Um, I'm sorry. I was seeing what you're putting in chat for Jeff. Put that into Wolfram. The sum. Oh, we're trying to find like a, a general formula for polynomials. It's my headphone. Oh my god, my my left ear is louder. I hate how my headphones do this. Oops, sorry for the shaking. Oh, much better. Oh, you get 420 on the end? It's funny. Does, yeah, does that factor in any way? Nope. Well, you can get a factor of negative one or something close to it, I guess, but... Okay, that's an irreducible 12th degree. Polynomial. That's great. So yeah, uh, just memorize that that formula, Jeff, and 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 then you're good for your fifteenth power sums. <laughs> formula for coefficients. I mean binomial. Well, never mind. I don't know. She. <laughs> they seem like they follow some type of pattern, right? I'll follow the two at the end here. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure, Jeff. Brex the fifth, it's really weird. That could be worse. Oh. I mean, it looks cleaner if you actually factor it, though. But, yeah. Fall Haber's formula? Oh, so it does use bi binomial. Well, it's kind of binomial-ish, not really. Bernoulli numbers. The cursed Bernoulli numbers? Huh. Oh my god. What are these? Oh. It's not saying how to generate them. Oh, because that's how you generate them. Riemann zeta function? Dude, this is one of those Wikipedia rabbit holes. Chat super dizzy by rating your run? Yeah. 
<laughs> it just feels like it's almost the exact same run we were just looking at before. Uh, do you have a, a run sit somewhere? We, we, we could watch one quick. Okay, anyway, I should probably stop clicking through. Oh, that's quick. Uh, seems like it. Um, shoot, you know, the audio isn't going to come through on the stream. Uh, I can't really quickly fix that, though. Oh, why are you ugly? Oh, I know why you were up there. Oh, God. What's happening? Okay, there we go. I, I, I figured it out. I'm smart. Hey, random audio doesn't add anything. It's just a clip. Okay. Uh, I'll make it in theater mode so it's at least a little bit bigger. Oh yeah, okay, this map I saw you, uh, working on. Oh, this is half sideways, okay. Another one y yesterday? Okay, nice. Dude, I'm, like, still struggling to even do, like, t tier 2 maps. <laughs> this is still, like, absolutely crazy to me. T4 or T5? Okay. Well, nice. Okay, we'll watch one more. Uh, it's going good, random dude. How about you? Uh, just, just looking at a few of uh Ben's nice runs here before we uh get, get back to doing the math. Actually, I can't make this bigger, can I? Oh god, dude, I, I I hate it when there's like teleporters in the map. Oh gosh, dude, the freaking shelves too. Yeah, it does look nice. Wow, nice. Uh get rid of that. Bring... Where where was I? Nope, not there. I was here. Did you like 20 minutes to learn, 20 minutes to hit that run? Oh. Well, I guess it's... Uh... Which took several hours. Really, for like a, a tier 4, tier 5, it still takes like several hours. I, I assume that like... Actually, I guess I, I I don't really know how hard the tiers are. And no bind half sideways. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Normal. Okay, I was like, yeah. <laughs> trying to plan to go back to college every step of the way, using underqualified underqualified basically every single course. Um, anyways, I guess I don't know all your background, random dude, but um. I don't know, is there a way they could, like, ease into it with, like, a community college or a junior college, depending on, like, I, I think different countries have different words, but, like, you try to go somewhere where it's, like, low stakes, and if you don't like 
how you did, then um, you just don't have to, you know, tell whatever school you apply to next, basically. <laughs> I don't know if that's like completely ethical, but uh, that's kind of like my thought. They're simplifying things with the complex exponential de definition for sine. So they're trying to simplify sine of 5x over sine of x using exponents. Yeah, what would you do next? Uh, multiply through by e to the x over e to the x. That really helps you. Yeah, because I'm thinking, like, if I was just in a trig class, you could do, like, sine of 4x plus x, and then do, like, a, an addition identity. Uh, what, what, what do our trig identities look like here? What's the addition identity for sine? I know that's really going to help you, though, because you get cosines involved, too, and it gets messy. I thought it was more like the cosine when we get uh, cosines and sines split up, and maybe you can do something there. Uh, even then, I don't think you can, though. Yeah, I think like it doesn't really simplify much. Oh, yeah, actually, what happens to that linear algebra per, per person? I I'm all over the place. Uh, you know, okay, no, let's just, I, I don't know what happens to that linear term, let's just qu quickly plug, um, those exponentials into Wolfram, just see if it's something that I'm, obvious that I'm missing. In which case, we'll tell this person what's up, otherwise we'll move on. But I don't think this really simplifies much. Really? Hey, Jed. Do you multiply by, like, the conjugate? How do you get that? And Rick, you're saying xy prime equals 1 plus y squared, y of e is equal to 1. Is this separable? Yeah, you divide each side by 1 plus y squared and divide each side by x, and I think you're good. Um, so you should get like arctan y equals 1 half x squared. If you want to see me do it on the board, I absolutely can. Discovering your hardest watch a master on your tiny iPhone. <laughs> um, try that. S sounds good, Henrik. Um, yeah, I, I try to. That's what. I, that's why I try to like zoom into things. But I never actually looked at my own stream on my phone. Um, so if you have any feedback for what I can do better, then please tell me because a lot of people do watch Twitch on, on their phones. Let's just see what happens when you multiply this by the conjugate. Uh, 
I wouldn't really call it like simpler though, just different. Say of e to the 5x minus e to the minus 5x over e to the x minus e to the minus x. So I'm thinking like try multiplying by the denominator but with a plus. Just see what happens. Um, 6x plus e to the 4x minus e. To the minus 4x minus e to the minus 6x over e to the 2x uh, plus 1 minus 1 minus e to the minus 2x. Oh, that doesn't really help you, does it? Uh, let's put it this way. You have to keep me entertained for three out for three hours before you can get through airport security for your flight. Do you have a three hour wait in the airport? Oh my god. That 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 is rough, buddy. Um Jeff, you're asking a quick way to determine if four points are coplanar. Yeah, I. It's the only place in Vegas unless you have fifteen dollars a hand for blackjack. <laughs> so wait, what, what, why can't you just uh, go through airport security and wait in the terminal? I, I guess maybe that sucks, but. Yeah, I, uh, my thought is also like what SPQ was saying. I don't know how you do it with, like, I, th I think you'd have to do it with. Oh, wait, coplanar. I think you would, uh. Oversized bags can't be checked until six hours before your flight. Oh my god, so you're gonna have a really long wait. Well, that sucks. Because if you're waiting until you can get through airport security six hours early. Uh, they do seem identical. I'm, I'm assuming as a typo though, we do have four distinct points. Or, you know, the question maybe is generally still, how do you check if four points are coplanar? So yeah, I, I mean, if it's coplanar, I think you would do, like... I think you do what SVQ says, but wouldn't you only do it with two other points, not three? Because you want co you want to make a plane with those two vectors, which are made of three points. And then you check if... Um... The remaining two vectors are in the span of the first two? Or I guess the remaining vector. Or you could get the equation for the plane 
but given three of the points and plug in the coordinates of the fourth point, which is, I guess that's basically what SVQ was saying, our results them being the same thing. Uh, Yanis, thanks for, for the follow. I'm going to move on from this one because I'm not sure the best way to simplify it. I mean, yeah. The series is divergent. How come the answer says the sum is 1? It's not divergent. Oh, they closed it. Okay, compare with the p-series 1 over n squared. It's not like converge. I don't know how you would calculate the sum. Oh, it's telescoping. Never mind, yeah. That's how you do it. Don't do my comparison thing. How to integrate one over one plus y squared? No, 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 no. That that's not a. Uh, I mean, it's it's legal if you do it right, but it doesn't help you. <laughs> or actually, no. It, you definitely will not get that that result. Um, uh, the integral of one over one plus y squared is arctan. Uh, No, I don't want the integral of arctan. I want the integral resulting in arctan. Basically, like, uh, this thing here, you can just know as a formula. The integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared is um, arctan x, in, in your case, arctan y. Because the problem with your u sub is that you get um, du equals 2y dy, and that extra y factor is hard to deal with. Uh, I definitely, well, I, I haven't memorized for arc sine, arctan. And those are really the ones that I see the most. The other ones I don't really run into frequently. But yeah, I don't, I don't know how you actually prove them. I just have them, I just have them uh, memorized. To return to annoy you later this afternoon. All right, sounds good, Jeff. <laughs> I you don't need to. I mean, 
not using integrating factor. You can separate this one. It's like, yeah, that's where they got to me in, though. Stranger Things vibes? Uh... It's from Stranger Things. <laughs> uh, the song is called Kids. It's just a random playlist that's definitely not on Spotify because I would never violate Spotify's terms of service. It's from something that's not Spotify. <laughs> Sine of 3x equals cosine of 2x? Oh, really, SPQ? Sorry, I doubted you then. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know like what's the easiest to do calculation wise, but I guess this point or the, this uh this works. Oh yeah, if they're Oh that that makes intuitive sense, I guess, because if they're linearly dependent, they don't span R3, which means they span R2, which is a plane, right? Oh gosh, we got another classic bio by bi, binomial expansion. If expansion of root x plus one to the twenty twenty, so yeah, it's because I, that makes sense now that I like I guess think about it more. Um, the number of all members in form of k x to the three n. K and then our whole numbers is ooh. How many multiples of three for the exponent? With a whole number coefficient. Um oops. Hmm. When you integrate the FT's integrated by parts, UV integral uh, VDU, you have to make those integrals that serve charge you've seen on YouTube. Uh, for your problem, I don't think you need integration by parts, but if you're asking just in general, Henrik, um, the charts, you never need the chart, but the chart is helpful if you have to do it multiple times. Um, in general, okay, yeah. So if you have, like, um, if you're trying to integrate, say, like, x to the fifth sine of x, this is integration by parts, but it's going to take, like, five rounds of integration by parts until you can actually get the, the final answer. So that's when you want to use a... Uh, a chart to save time. Um, bio, I, I can get to it now. I, I'm just trying to think about how we actually do this one. But I, I don't have a different question to work on right now. I'm just not sure how we, uh, I guess, get all these.
So if we apply the binomial expansion formula, oh gosh, uh, is it k equals zero or k equals one? I think k equals zero. We said it was like this, right? It's 337. It does help. It's gonna be something with numbers down there. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. So... X to the 3N. All numbers with... Number of members... Okay, so that's our question here. About 2020 over 6, classic plus 1 or minus 1 dilemma. Yeah, SVQ, I was, I was just thinking about, like, like, you know, that's about dividing it, I guess, into 6, because you have a, a root x. I don't know... I mean, we know that n is twenty twenty. I guess. Just plug that right in. So, I guess... Um... Let me plug in, I guess, P and Q as well. I, I should have done this before. So root x is x to the 1 half. So it's, I can also call it 10, 10 minus 1 half k times, oh, I guess just 1. So that's always nice that we get a 1 for the other number that doesn't affect anything. So we want to know how many values of k gives us a multiple of 3 here? And then further check whether that's a, a whole number, the choose, versus a rational... Actually, no. Can choose ever be a rational number rather than just a whole number? Doesn't make sense to have a fractional thing, I guess. But it's also weird. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about SVQ, like, choose, it never results in a fraction, does it? I feel like it should with the formula being so weird, but I, I don't think it does. <laughs> um, so I guess really the question is, how many multiples of three are there in this series of numbers? So, I mean, immediately, you can chop off little fractions. Those won't be multiples of three. I see they won't be multiples of three with a whole number. So, really, just how many multiples of three are there between 1 and 10, 10, I think is the question. 
Um, so what's the multiple of three closest, like closest in below ten ten? A thousand nine doesn't work. So a thousand eight must work. Three, nine, one. Is this three three seven? Three three six. Really? Oh wait, in three itself maybe? How do we interpret this? I think I nearly have the answer. I, I, I can't really explain why that much though. Zero maybe? Oh. That's true. Zero's allowed here. Um three? Oh my god. So maybe maybe zero is the reason you have to add one here. So I think dividing 1,008 by 3 covers all numbers between 3 and 1,008. And then you add 1 for the 0? That's the best explanation that I can come up with. But it's this is very... It's more like a number theory thing that I'm not very good with. Can you explain the thing again? Why is it 10, 10 over 3? Yeah, uh, that's fair, Bio. I didn't really explain that, did I? So... <laughs> Um, 10, 10 over 3, so first of all, I got to 10, 10 is, uh, in the formula, like, there, I did, uh, root x to the 20, 20, and sorry if you already, uh, I'm just saying this part, to the, to the 20, 20 minus k, root x is just an exponent of 1 half, so, uh, a power to a power like this multiplies, Let's get uh, x to the 20, 20 minus k over 2, which is x to the 10, 10 minus 1 half k. And so that's how I got that step there. And then I started thinking about all the values of k that we're going to get and whether the result is going to be divisible by 3. Or, you know, be able to be expressed in this form. Actually, does a natural number include... Is zero a whole number? I, I called it a natural number, but <laughs> I think zero is a whole number. <laughs> I, I, that might be a topic of debate, though. <laughs> but I started thinking about like all the all the exponents we're gonna get up here can are like zero, a half, one, three halves, two, all of these uh, up to ten, ten. Actually. Yeah. And so the goals basically count how many of these numbers increasing by half each time are divisible by three and whole numbers. So immediately we can throw out the fractions because those aren't whole numbers. Um, and then we look and then um we look at the kind of the endpoint here, and we want things that are divisible by three because it's x to the three n. Each number has to be able to be multiplied by three, or you know, be divisible by three to, to fit this form, x to the three n. So I did it. I try, I try to divide uh, ten ten by three. It doesn't work. I try to divide a thousand nine by three. It doesn't work. Right? So you 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 get like a, a remainder. So the first number or I guess the last number that is divisible by 3 in this sequence of numbers is 1,008, and you get 336. But I think because the interpretation of 1,008 divided by 3, this is where I'm getting really... I'm reverse engineering it and knowing the, sol the solution already. 
I, I think this only covers the numbers between three and a thousand eight, but not the zero. So that's, that's why you have to add the one. But I, I really have a, I don't have a good explanation for this other than instincts, I guess. <laughs> Zero is natural and whole is either natural or, or integer, therefore zero is whole. Okay. I, I I I didn't I don't remember what the debates are. Uh the exponent is allowed to be whatever, like you will get all of these exponents as part of your binomial expansion. We only care about the exponents that are multiples of three though. It's this part here that we care about divisibility by three. And we're just trying to count how many of those, uh, how many in, in this sequence are divisible by three, basically. But yeah, if, if, if this is like a four or something instead, we divide everything by four, plus five, we divide everything by five, and so on like that. So we don't end up with some exponents like three over two. Um, right. We throw those out immediately because three is a whole number, n is a whole number we're never get, gonna get a fraction if we multiply those two so we don't need to care like we, we're never go, going to count these the problem becomes counting the number of multiples of three between zero and ten ten Oops, if x is divisible by k, well, it's not just that they're a whole, they have to be divisible by 3. So they have to be, um, they have to be able to write, be written in the form 3n. So um, you can write 1008 in the form 3 times 336. But you, we we don't do it for like a thousand nine, because there there's there's no, you know, you you don't have a clean number to do three times something is a thousand nine. It's going to be some fraction. Like you can, you can only write a fraction in that spot, so we do not want to count a thousand nine. That's why we're only counting some of these. It's still good. It doesn't divide by 3, but it's multiplied by 3. Uh... Like you're right, it is three times big n, which is multiplication, but it's really division because you care about the end result here. Like we're doing a thousand eight divided by three is that three thirty six there. A thousand nine divided by three isn't a whole number. Like we want, we want to only plug in a whole number here that results in the exponent we actually want. It's so like this big n is not an actual number from this sequence here. It's just any whole number. The actual result has to be like, you know, the exponent that, that's that's like there, I guess. It's um sorry, I, like you want x to the three big n equals x to the ten ten minus one half k. So, if you, like, if you equate the exponents, you get 3n equals 10, 10 minus 1 half k, divide each side by 3, 1 half k over 3. How many numbers can you plug in for k? that give a whole number answer for this, because n has to be a whole number. That's the, the, the problem, basically. So you are doing division here. It just doesn't look like it at first glance. But since n has to be a whole number, we need to look for things that cancel out with that 3. Hey, Miles Larcott. 
How's it going? Yeah, I hope that that at least kind of makes sense. It's a little bit hard to explain, to be honest. <laughs> multiple just means that um, if something's a multiple of three, then you can do uh, three times something to get to that number. So you'd say that nine is a multiple of three because you can do three times three to to, to get nine. Uh, don't know how to call that in your language. Um, I wouldn't know either. <laughs> Divisible by three, yes. You say that nine is a multiple of three because it is divisible by three. <laughs> Uh, I do kind of need to use the bathroom, so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna put in my BRB screen back in like one minute.
Okay. We're here. Hey, who? Yep, PB time indeed. <laughs> and hey, Obi. Alright, let's keep looking for, for new questions, I guess. Am I Irish? Uh, I got Irish heritage. My mom's side is, is uh, like, varied Irish. Like, orange hair and everything. I meant Sharon, yeah. <laughs> Who's right? I don't know Athian subspace. I assume it just means they make a plane. I don't really know how you prove that though. I'm not good enough with linear algebra. Minus one Irish point for losing to the first best beard on Twitch. <laughs> Unfortunately. Find K so that's continuous. It's like a translation of a linear subspace. Oh, like, um, so it doesn't go through the origin? N necessarily? Okay. I still don't know how to do that problem, but because <laughs> I'm not good with like linear algebra. Um, that's good to know, I guess. First, you have to find k so the function is continuous. Which is this even possible? Do you have a cos an x is trapped in a cosine, and an x is trapped outside the cosine? So I don't know if this is possible. So you do it numerically. Or there's some like uh quick solution like negative one. Is it negative it's negative one, isn't it? Oh wait, no no no. I think x equals negative one. Actually Wait, find k so it's continuous. Oh you plug in pi over two for x, I guess. But no, then you get pi I I dude, I don't I'm getting confused. I'm moving on. Uh, very hyped St. Patty's Day this weekend in a big no, no, no. It's anyone celebrating St. Patty's Day. It says Psyche the North Irish lady. <laughs> Total profit in the first three years of operation. So I guess you'd integrate that from 0 to 3. Oh. They're mean. What? You might be able to complete the square here and get a nice U sub. I don't think that integral is very simple, though. Oh, this is hard to read. Oh, wait, never mind. You, you just get a nice use of off the bat. Never mind, never mind. Yeah, because you get 2t plus 2, and you factor the 2 out. And um, that will cancel the t plus one. So that, okay, that that integral isn't as, isn't as mean as I thought it'd be. Um, I need to make this bigger though. I can hardly read their writing here.
this doesn't really help to be honest. Well, it helps a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, they take uh, 10 out front, t plus 1, t squared plus 2, t plus 2 to the 1 third. They take u equals t squared plus 2, t plus 2, so du equals 2, t plus 2, dt. Um, so they switch out this under the cube root. Everything else stays the same for now, though. Their notation is a little bit messy here. Where do these twos come from? That's still a 10 out front. I'm getting really lost in their work. I feel like they're making this more complicated than it has to be. What are you supposed to get after the, uh, you do this U-sub? You should get um, one half cube root U. And they get just U. Because they put an extra factor of two out front just for fun, it seems. I can't really figure out what, where, where that came from. They still have the integral symbol here after they already integrated. It's like they adjust the bounds. Or there you go. So when t equals 0, u is 2. Good. When t is 3, u is 9 plus 6 plus 2, which is 17. Also good. Wait, and then you just divide by two at the end? Okay, so... Then um, somehow divided by two again at the end. Here's what uh, I do. Double dollar signs. Okay, so slash. Oh god, is it slash n? I shouldn't have closed the, the cheat sheet. I'm so bad with tech. How, how do I not remember after I've typed it so many times? Cheat. Close out of that. That an integral, I'm like 90% sure it's slash in. Yeah, slash int slash limits slash ah, int slash limits underscore um, zero to three. 10 t plus 1 slash square root square brackets 3. Pen Center taught me that. Uh, t squared plus 2t two plus 2 dt. 
equals um, uh, pen slash int slash limits. Do not do this to me. Discord, uh, I think it'll be okay. Limits. So now uh, we're doing the U sub here. So we said it's from 2 to 17. Actually, uh, I think I'm skipping too many steps here. Slash frac um, numerator denominator to t plus one du equals Shan't include spaces in LaTeX formulae. I'm not putting spaces in this. Did I put a space somewhere? I I don't know. After the slash limits. Oh no, it's because um Discord is trying to format it with italics and it makes it's it makes it look weird. I didn't actually put a space there though. It's because Discord is thinks it's 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 formatting. I think at least. Um slash frac u to the slash frac four three. Oh, it's so hard to do this without being able to keep track of my brackets. That one goes with that one. We need another closing bracket, now an opening bracket. Over slash frac four three. Oh, and how do you do um, the like bar to evaluate the limits? Uh, I don't see it. Oh, slash. I see slash Lvert or slash Rvert for like the absolute value symbols. I'll just try Lvert, I guess. It'll appear small. Okay. I'll, I'll just try Lvert and see what happens, I guess. Slash limits. Uh, to 17. I, I, I'm making that, that up. I don't know if it'll actually work. I'll just send this and see if it, uh, <laughs> see where it goes. Compile error. Yeah, yeah. I think the Elbert kind of worked. It's a little small. I, I guarantee you I mismatched a bracket, right? Oh god. Oh, the misplaced limits are no limits? Oh, it is slightly to the side. Okay.
me a oh the person is typing back. LaTeX vertical bar integral. One eleven times one eleven and base seven. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. <laughs> Is there a trick? There's no carrying. So one, two, three, two, one. Oh wait, is that the same in base 10? Oh, okay. Well, I guess I was making it harder myself than I had to. Slash bigger slash Arbert AB works for you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, these examples are only doing a, a lower. Not the um, from one thing to another, just like at, at a point. Um, slash over slash one is bad. Yeah, that's what the, the bot yelled at me for that. Slash Albert, really? Let's, let's try it. Oh, yeah, okay, you're right. Well, could, could it be like just slash vert as well? Oh, okay. I think the Elbert and Arbert is maybe just for absolute values. Slash bigger. Oops, no E. Ooh! That, okay, that'll be, that's nice for like if you have fractions like I had. How, like what? What else does this work on? <laughs> like I kind of, <laughs> I want to do some limit testing here. Pun intended. I think it's a bigger integral, or is it? No, it doesn't like it. Oh well. Can I throw it anything? Or maybe it just doesn't like something else. I don't know. That doesn't matter. Yeah, that's what I mean. If you have some kind of like a rational function to integrate or something. Sum to 100 and their product is a maximum? Ooh. Yeah, you don't need them to be integers, so you can do this with calculus.
Yo, Dr. Gold. Yeah. So, um, some multivariable optimization. I haven't done it in a minute, but it's not that bad. Ended up get, getting it to zero. 33 and a third? Would it? I would believe it. Would the, is there a, a different way you get a bigger product, though? I, I don't know. Um... Figure doesn't work with math with math formulas, unlike math larger, which is not supported by Discord. Uh, children show is greater than eleven times thirteen. Really? Huh. So, what's wrong with their answer? n squared is greater than n squared minus 1 is equal to n plus 1 n minus 1. <laughs> oh, that, uh, that's, that's weird. I, I guess that's true, though. It's, I guess that would make sense if we extend it to three numbers like we have here. This works is 25 plus 5 root 26. Let's just go to the board and try and work it out. Okay. So, uh, let's do green. We don't, we, we don't do green enough. Um, we have... We'll name our three numbers as X, Y, and Z as this person did. Why a thousand? <laughs> Just a hundred. So, we have three numbers that sum to a hundred. We want to optimize their product that I'll call P, I guess. X, Y, Z. This person, um, they solved it for x, I guess, which we can do too. Uh, which means you can plug that in here. Get 100 minus y minus z, uh, y, z. Now, is this, am I in line with what this person wrote? Even among numbers, equality makes us all stronger. <laughs> he started smoking early. <laughs> Okay, uh, so my, my work is in line with this person's work. But someone else just replied back in the Discord saying basically what you guys said, that you expect them all to be equal to each other. Man, and we, we, that means we miss out on doing a, like a, a calculus problem. I mean, we still could do it ju just for fun, I guess. It's a little two-variable optimization. Um, how you, so yeah, so you do the, I'm going to do it for fun. Just so I can run myself. So you do the partial in terms of y, which is 100z minus 2yz minus z squared. We're going to set equal to 0. We're also going to take the partial in terms of z, also set equal to 0. Uh, just that. Uh, you can solve, I guess, this for z and plug it in up there. Get a quadratic. Maybe it's not a qu quadratic. I 
like that. Anything I'm missing? No? Okay, I think that's our sub. At P over at X and at... I don't know what you're saying. But yeah, we can plug this in up here for Z. 100... 50 minus 1 half y, 2y, 50 minus 1 half y, minus 50 minus 1 half y squared, 0. Okay. We get uh, 50 with two zeros minus 50y minus 100y plus y squared. I can do math, right? think so. Oh, uh, shoot, that's squared. Um, 50 times 50 is 2,500. 50 times 1 half times 2 is just 50. It's going to be negative, negative is plus. Oh, it's going to be a quartic. Oh, God. I didn't even think about that. Wait. I wrote that wrong. It's spread it on the outside. Wait, wait, wait. What the hell? I... 50y. There we go. It's, it's not a... It's a quadratic. It's like something went horribly wrong. Zero. Okay. So y squared minus a quarter y squared is three quarters. Y squared minus 50 minus 100 minus 150 plus 50 is minus 100. Y... Plus 2,500? Oh, you know, that's just easy mental math to factor that. No. Need to get, get rid of the denominator. It's not easy. Is it? Actually, no, I, I want to try to do this in my head now. Or not like in my head, but at least like without using te technology. So that multiplies to 30,000 and adds to 400. I mean, uh, it's like 30 and 4. So you have 6 and 5. You have 10 and 3. Oh, wait, it's going to be 33 and a third if I did it right. So it's not going to be a simple thing to factor. Okay, we're going to do te technology. 100 over 3? Yeah. She's saying partials? Oh, okay, Jeff. No worries. Oh, that's your, like... <laughs> that's your improvised symbol for, for for the partial? That's funny. It does kind of look like it. Yeah, you're right. Why should it be 100 over 3? I just apparently like to do things the hard way. Does 100 over 3 even work, though? I feel like that ends up with a fraction. It's not right. And it's so I did something wrong. Back in the day before we knew tech. Oh, funny. Okay, it does get 100 over 3. Okay, cool. See, I've just made uh, an algebra error somewhere. I think it's an interesting discussion happening in Discord. So, like, there's been a couple people who are like jumping into to this one. So, this is the initial question. Uh, Bungo said, "Some x y z products with zero symmetry in x y and z." I don't know if symmetric has a really specific meaning, but they're coming, or you know, it's basically saying what you guys were saying in chat. But I'm kind of curious what like if symmetric is formally defined, or if they're just saying that. Um, 
in a more intuitive way than a formal way. She's saying if the variables aren't equal, then it can't be optimal. I don't know how you really show that. It works for n numbers, BTW. Interesting. Oh, yeah, the person wasn't doing the algebra quite right. Okay, so either way, this is being handled. I was kind of curious to see what the discussion was on that one. I don't know how you prove that the wrong thing is not optimal, but... I'm sure there's a way to do it. We got flat earth working on some sequences that are convergent. <laughs> If A sub n is convergent, then as a monotone subsequence of B sub n. That makes sense because it accounts. Because if it's um, not an alternating sequence, then the entire sequence should be monotone. I don't really know. I, I probably would be good exercise to prove. I don't really want to work with someone in flat earth, though. <laughs> They can believe whatever they want. I just don't want them to freaking make that their username. Uh, looking at tensors. Increase. One variable by epsilon, reducing there by epsilon, so the difference in product is positive. Oh. I guess so, yeah. That, that makes sense, Jeff. All these uh, threads are closed, and they're just not getting cleaned up, it seems. What's happening here? What demon has asked you to solve this integral? What's the problem? Oh my god. What is this integral? Like, it's got to convert to polar or something, right? <laughs> they wouldn't just drop this on you and walk away, would they? There's a lot of even powers, so... I would hope there's some way to factor this. And the bounds really imply this is polar. 
plot it in Desmos? That could help. Um, let me. I will see what the discussion is here, though. Oh my god. Okay, so they had the same idea. Polar coordinates. Oh my god. Did they write down the unit? Isn't that x to the fourth? I think they corrected down here, though, anyway. That would have been terrible if they, if they did all this work. This is the scariest thing I've ever seen. It's for nothing, bot. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what it looks like in Desmos. I feel like if I feel like better people than, than me have tried to solve this though. Oh, we don't have anything that's equal to, do we? Uh... One? I guess it, Yeah, we have to do this uh, three-dimensionally, don't we? <laughs> I presume I just thought it'd be an implicit function. But yeah, of course we don't have that. This is a surface and it rolls in it. This looks suggestive. <laughs> equals E. I, I, I didn't imagine that Desmos would, would care. I, I just did equals E because that was the most convenient thing. So yeah, you're integrating over this. Zoom in, hubba hubba. <laughs> um, you're basically integrating over a circle in the xy plane as that circle goes out to infinity. And I guess you'd hope that it converges? Um... Limit the x, y axes to negative one. I mean, the integral isn't limited to negative one, though. Oh, if you just want the the hubba hubba, maybe. <laughs> oh, no, 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 we are not. Check again is less than r squared, and we're doing the limit as r goes to infinity. <laughs> um, either way, you're like, just integrating it is kind of a... Uh, kind of a pain. Like... So yeah, it definitely... Sc the, the screen's converted to polar to me. It just... Um,
Doesn't seem that easy to integrate even if you do convert it to polar. Hey, minority, how, how, how's it going? Is there an odd power? I don't see one. Oh, do you have a problem, my minority? Uh, I'm doing good. Let's see. Oh yeah, okay. How much time does the air traffic controller have till the planes collide? Ooh, okay, we got a dark question here. <laughs> Oh, or I guess the happy interpretation. How, how much time does the air traffic controller have to get one of the planes on a different flight path? Okay. Uh, an air traffic controller spots two planes at the same altitude converging on a point as they fly at right angles to each other. One plane is 225 miles from the point moving at 450 miles an hour. Cool. Okay. Point seven miles from the point moving at six hundred miles an hour. How is the distance between them decreasing? How much time is the air traffic controller? So basically, we want to figure out when the distance between them is zero. Probably want to give them a bit more leeway than that in practicality, but <laughs> um, yeah. So, so let's take a closer look at your work for part A. Make sure that. I understand the problem, what you've done so far. Yeah, I definitely want Pythagorean Theorem here. Um, the evidence between them is x squared plus y squared equals s squared. And you figured out that when the scenario first begins, the distance between them is 375. I think it's, I, it must be Pythagorean tri triple. I just wonder what it is when you reduce it. It's not really important, though. Um, we want ds by dt. Completely agree. So you take the derivative of this with respect to time. You get 2x dx dt, 2y dy dt, and 2s ds dt. Good. Um, The distance between them How are the distance between the planes decreasing? I'm just wondering if it's it shouldn't be dependent on time. I was wondering because because things scale with the square if it would be dependent on t, but I guess not. It'd be a constant rate. And that's kind of what the running question implies, that it'd be a constant rate. Okay, so I guess I'm on board with um, what's happening here for part A. So... How much time does the air traffic controller have to get one of the planes on a different flight path? And I think Jeff has kind of set up our equation. Well, maybe we'll have to save ourselves a bit of work. Yeah, I mean, it's basically, uh, all roads lead to, lead to Rome here, I think. Murder Suspect's way is more clever. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, so the question doesn't tell you that, like, they're going to get to the point at the same time, but I'm sure that's, that is, like, the implication. 
Um, so you could just take one of these planes and figure out when it's going to hit the origin, and that's your time. So if it's going towards the origin, it's 300 miles away, and it's moving 600 miles per hour, that's half an hour. Uh, same with the other plane, it's 225 miles away, going at 450 miles an hour. So that means in half an hour, they're, they're going to collide, and that's much time you, you have. So, you, I mean, you basically set up the equation... Um, 225 minus 450t equals zero. You could have to by a thousand feet. Yeah, that's probably the easier way. <laughs> and you also you could also set up the equation 300 minus 600t equals zero as well. But you don't actually need any calculus for this. It's just algebra for part B. And I can actually write this out my, minority if you if you need it because I, I know it's hard to like follow when it's verbal. But you really just want to figure out when one of these planes is going to get to the origin. And that's how much time you have. You don't you you, you can safely assume the other plane is going to get to the origin at the same time. True or you need to find the time. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do either, I mean, you can do one or both of, um, 225 minus 450t equals zero, or, um, 300 minus 600t equals zero to get t equals one half. So there's half an hour left. Just speed up to avoid the collision, a well-known trick. <laughs> Basically playing chicken. You know, what if they both speed up? Then you're just making the crash worse. Yeah, um, let me have, if you have any, any questions on this minor, I, I hope I explained it okay. So you purchase a faster vehicle? Yeah. <laughs> no formulas needed to then be differentiated. Yeah, I was expecting that too, minority, that we have to do some kind of calculus, but you really don't need it. Um, like, you could make it harder, and like... Um, get x and y as functions of t and figure out when s becomes zero, but you really don't have to. You got a question about linear algebra, Harambe? Uh, I'll, I'll try it. I'm not the best with linear algebra, but someone in the chat might be able to figure it out too. If you want, feel free to type it out there in chat or you can put it in the, uh, the Discord here. Second derivative mode? Yeah, no, I, I understand that. But yeah, I guess you, you're reserving the time when that happens, Jeff, I guess. Now I'm going to quickly uh, check one thing on my Discord. Okay. You got an integral, and within that integral, I have four matrices. Oh. But you got an integral, within that integral, you have four matrices. I was curious if you got to carry out the matrix multiplication first and then integrate.
Yeah, I haven't done an integral of matrices before. <laughs> Harambe. Actually, the second person today was, was asked about them, which is kind of strange, because I, I never heard of it. Which, it's not strange that I haven't heard of it, but, um... Oh no. Wait, so you don't when you solve a system of differential equations, you're really just plugging into a formula. You don't have to actually integrate anything unless you're you're really showing your your work. Do you hear from Zach about later? So yeah, I, when I was just checking, I was seeing his Discord to see uh what the plan is. So I, I guess we're just all gonna pile, like dogpile into section two. That's gonna be at the normal time. It's just going to be interesting to have that many people there. I guess I don't, well, we don't know that everyone for section two is going to show up, I guess, but <laughs> he posted uh, in his Discord, I guess, that uh, you want parallel stream then? Okay. Yeah, I, I sent the pirates back on at his house, so hopefully it'll go off without a hitch. So, I mean, When I was in systems of differential equations, I don't remember having to actually integrate anything. Like, the integration is always the same, so they just gave you the formula for it. So you can integrate each component. But you're saying you have a product of two matrices. Um, I would think you have to do the multiplication. Oh, hey, Zach. Can you get matrix? You do it term by term? Okay, I, I'd never seen this before. I guess I... Uh... I guess I don't see a reason why you can't do it term by term. I don't really know what it means, but you could. So yeah, um, Harambe, I, if you have a product of two matrices, I, unless there's some weird, like, U sub equivalent for matrices, I, I would imagine you have to, to multiply them out. Karate class? Sounds good. Yeah, um, I'm not familiar at all with integrating matrices, but I, I would think that you have to, uh, to multiply it out. Um, the problem that Rambo is saying is uh, they have an integral with four matrices, I think all being multiplied, and they wanted to know if um, you could save some work and integrate each one individually and then multiply after, which I don't think would be right. And they have to do the matrix multiplication first. Uh, oh. Um. I, there's not a ton of other problems that I think I'll be able to find. Is there anything like that I can dig through for the real analysis? Okay. 
because like the recent ones, I do have some unsolved problems from the recent ones, but they're kind of uh a lot of like computational work that uh I don't feel that inclined to do right now. I'm gonna open up just a couple of the last last like you know five or so worksheets and just see if there's anything that I haven't gotten to yet. Maybe that I want to like go back to in, re in review. So this was the last meeting. And we did cover all of these, which I just said the bad word, but... <laughs> I, I don't really care about calling it covering per, per, per personally. You have another easy question, Jeff? Oh, good. I'm sure I, I can answer it. Like, I thoroughly answer all your other questions. <laughs> Oops. Ah, oh, dude, I, I need a more stable desk. Two points at random in the unit cube, choosing to be the diagonal of a rectangle. Do you randomly choose the other two points to form a rectangle? Oh. Is there more than one rectangle that you can make? I have a hard time visualizing that. I guess, yeah, you wouldn't randomly choose a plane like that. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you just always choose, like, the same plane or something, too, if you want to keep the calculations more consistent, like, and make a plane out of those, and then figure out your, your rectangle from there, I guess? I... Well, your third point is fixed, at least, to make a plane out of. I just always choose one corner of the unit cube, I guess. Like, arbitrarily. Like, if you're just trying to figure out, like, a plane to make the rectangles on, I don't... Is there a reason to just choose a unique one for each thing? Or a unique, like, third point to, to make your plane with? Well, yeah, but I guess you'd at least start by restricting yourself to a plane and then figure out the rectangle from there. It's like the third point isn't the third point of the rectangle, just any third point to make a plane with, I guess. And then on that plane, you figure out the rectangle. I don't know how you do that, to be fair, but... <laughs> also, this is like... I. I... <laughs> I don't know what makes less sense to me, uh, this post or Jeff's question, <laughs> you know, which one makes me feel more out of my depth.
probably this what or probably like this stuff to be honest, like Hilbert spaces, measure spaces. Bachner integrable function. I guess you don't know whether the rectangle that you can form with that plane will lie with all its corners on the unit cube, though. That might be an issue. Like, the rectangle you get from fixing the plane might not fit your constraints, depending if that is a constraint that all four corners have to be on the unit cube, or just those two. Point-wise integration for Rn. Gonna project? Okay. What if I don't know what point-wise integration is either? <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Looks like you're measure three class. Oh, good. So you feel right at home here. <laughs> this is what SPQ was saying for um, something related to Harambe's question. I don't know enough to say how, but yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I might, um... Alright, I'm thinking I want to, like... I'll be there for, like, a bit longer to see if, I, um... Someone pops in with a question. In the meantime, we'll see if we can maybe find some old real analysis questions to, to go back to. But, uh... I definitely feel I'm like uh, I'm not, I might fe uh, feel it. Like I probably shouldn't stream for a ton longer. Component wise, oh, if it makes you feel any better, I don't know what that means either. <laughs> so you know, to me at least, it's all the same. I remember doing these. Man, apparently I'm like... being good at actually doing these extra prompts. Oh yeah, these were all fun. I, I already did all these though. Especially the one with the, the limit for E. Especially. It's cool. Oh, I, yeah, I, I did these. Um, those were also fun.
Dang, I'm, I'm, I'm digging deep. This is problem set 11. We're on like 20... Like we're about to be on 21, I think. Something like that. Did these two. Toshi sequences converge in Q. Did I I don't think I did this one. Um Oh no. I feel like maybe No, we did this one. Cause I think there's a question about is the sequence in Q or just the the result or like there's like interpretation each other we're like having to ask about, but it was um yeah, and and the the answer goes is um you can have a sequence of rational numbers converge to an irrational number. Um because you can have something like um your sequence could be like uh like you know the first digit of pi, the first two digits of pi, the first three digits of pi, those are all rational numbers, but they'll converge to pi, which is irrational. Hmm. You know what? Okay, let me let me skip to like was it the very fir first one? <laughs> um This is the very first problem set. I still haven't figured out this you know er erroneous visual proof. That pyro four equals one, which I I I, I, I haven't think about like this week especially just like think about like problem um, with that proof that the error in estimation remains constant. How is that assumption being made? Wait, the error in estimation remains constant, or not? Really? That doesn't seem like it. Like, you have the, in the first stage, you have the error here, which is eliminated in this next one. Measuring perimeter, not area. I need to, okay, so the square is side length one, the circle is radius one half. I think it has to be. Um, and so, a, so the perimeter of the, or the circumference of the, to, of, of the circle is um, pi. So a quarter of that is pi over four. The perimeter of the square in this first stage, at least, is a uh, what's it called? One half plus one half is one. So yeah, I, I guess we are thinking about perimeter, not area. Um, 
And I guess doing this collapsing thing doesn't actually change the perimeter. It just looks like it does. The perimeter of the square is always one. And so you can't draw this conclusion about the curved line because the per perimeter of the square isn't actually changing. It just looks like it does. Like it's always going to be, I guess, like with ridges, no matter how many times you uh, divide it. Yeah, I didn't see it before this class, Jed, but... It was kind of like messing with me for a while, and, and then I forgot about it. And then when I've been thinking about it again, I don't know. I feel like I was kind of like getting to this to this point, but uh, yeah, we were getting to the point of like having figured it out, but not really confidently. Yeah, I assume that's the point of having this question here too on the very first like prompt. Hmm. Okay. I remember doing number eight. I remember doing number nine. Did I, I don't know if I did ten. I did do ten. I don't know if I understood the point of what 10 was, but I just did it. <laughs> Maybe it's this is even like preparation for integrating now that I look back at it. Some techniques show that upon of right triangle is the sum of the two sides. Well, like, with everything, like, you mean the Pythagorean Theorem? So things are squared? So you basically, instead of, like, the circle curved there, you'd have um, a straight line. And that actually could converge as you would want it to. Small x and small y increments approximate by hypotenuse. Okay. Interesting, interesting. This is uh, for meeting two. Square root 2 equals 2. Oh. Well, I... I, I thought the thing Jeff was saying that you, there's a way to make that become valid. Uh, yeah, it definitely won't be square root 2 equals 2, I guess. Or square root 2 equals 1. So I remember, I think, I believe I did do this question, but Zone Ranger recommended a video related to this that I forgot to actually go and watch, so I, I, should, I should go and watch that. But yeah, like this uh, recursive sequence, it calculates the square root of 2, I think. We use Danny's theorem to prove square root of x equals x. <laughs> Oh wait, or it was this one that Zone Ranger said that there's a video on. Yeah, I think it was this one. I 
I remember doing 10. For 11, I think I'd rather just look this up. <laughs> This doesn't help me. Okay, Matt, I'm going to be honest, I'm reading this, but my brain's getting a little bit fuzzy because <laughs> I know I, I think I should probably call the stream here because I still have to do the real analysis this evening now since it got cut off this morning and uh, probably shouldn't be fuzzy for, for, for that. Um, let's see... Close out all of all these million tabs I just opened. Let's see who's live right now. Mm. Looks like Dr. Gold is live. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I don't think what's happening in chat. Uh... I can get to do all this work for me. I'm old and tired. <laughs> Guess it's a little, like, back and forth there. Um, see, I'm going to cut off the YouTube stream here, so if you're here on YouTube, I appreciate you, but I'm going to call it there. Uh, so, goodbye, YouTube.